talking to you guys about cucumber and water and uh, writing automated browser-based acceptance tests using behavior-driven development, which sounds like a lot. Um, but actually, Cucumber is just the testing framework. Water um, is for writing code to interact with your web browser. And behavior-driven development is just the methodology around that. Um, so what is behavior-driven development? It, you, I know we've done some test writing before, and full stack, a lot of it's based on uh, test-driven development, so writing tests first, and uh, behavior-driven development is sort of an extension off of that, um, whereas you define your tests first, complete the test, and then verify the t that the tests pass. Um, a big part of that is also making sure that they fail first, so that you know that you're not writing incorrect tests. Um, Behavior-driven development sort of expands on that, especially with acceptance testing, and you're trying to really think about how the user is going to interact with your application. Um, so a way that a developer and a business manager would go about this is creating user stories and acceptance criteria in order to figure out what tests are needed, as opposed to a developer going around and creating you know, a million tests for edge cases that might not happen, instead of thinking how is the user actually going to interact with the application. Um, so. Why do we follow behavior-driven development? Um, so we've been working mostly in conjunction with other developers, but in um, a real business scenario, you're going to be working with a lot of product managers, business leaders that don't quite understand how, um, how code may work. Um, and communication between those two is really key to making sure that you actually build the right feature that the company needs. And a lot of times, that is harder than you might think. Um, so typically, like in a perfect world, Communication between the two would be great. Developers would know exactly what business leaders are talking about. Uh, business leaders would know exactly what developers are talking about. Uh, typically not true. The communication is worse in one of the directions. I'll let you guess which direction. Um, so behavior-driven development helps to bridge that gap. Um, and it tries to get you to think in a way of, is my code correct versus uh, am I building this feature correctly? Um, and the way that we think about that is, is where are we starting? in the future, what action does the user take, and what is the expected outcome from that, and how can I code around that? For example, here is a basic unit test. Um, I actually took one from our workshops to make it easier. This is an example of um, a test that tests the get all that, fetch that fetches all the back end to do's in the database. And um, this is a great unit test for a developer. If, if a business manager saw this, they might not understand what it does. However, if you show them an acceptance test that looked like this, they'd probably be more likely um, to understand what feature you built and what acceptance criteria it fills. And so where's the code behind this? Um, I'm going to be showing you how you might write a test like this using Cucumber, which is a testing framework, and WATER, which stands for Web Application Testing in Ruby. Um, you can also use JavaScript or a ton of other languages. I'm just specifically going to use Ruby because it's what I'm personally more comfortable with. And Cucumber is for the behavior-driven development side of it, and Water is for the web application testing end. Uh, I'm specifically going to use Water WebDriver, which helps you spin up a new browser uh, automatically for all of your tests. And you can actually see uh, sort of a fake robot user interacting with your browser to make sure that things are working how you want them to work. So this is just a brief breakdown of how a test might look. On the left is um, the bigger version of the acceptance test I showed earlier. Uh, this is the most front-end version of Cucumber. Uh, that acceptance test is written in a syntax called Gherkin, where you have a feature outline and then a scenario outline, and all of your steps are organized, and organized with given whens and thens to make, uh, to make the flow really understandable to whoever is reading it, whether it's a developer or uh, a product manager. And each of those steps is backed by actual code. And the steps themselves are called step definitions. And uh, Cucumber actually uses regex so that it, when it parses through it, it doesn't matter whether you use given and really um, anything. Well, I guess it can be anything because it's Gherkin, so it would have to be given and or then. But it allows you to reuse a lot of your steps so you don't have to write duplicate code. So uh, I went over this briefly, but again, again 
uh, your future outline should have the description of what you're doing, the scenario that you want to test, and the steps that you need to go about to get the result that you want. Um, and in the step definition, just for example, this first step here actually spins up the browser, um, which is the at sign b equals water browser new. Uh, it goes to, in this case, my local host. Uh, I'm going to be demoing with the plant stack store that we've been building. And it actually will log in as uh, a non-admin user, and it will try to register a new user. So that is the zoomed in version. OK, demo time. So what I did um, is basically took one of the branches of our project and made a good version and then a bad version of that. And the bad version technically works, but it is an example of what might happen if a developer decided to change the way a feature worked in a way that technically didn't break anything, but just changed the flow of how a user might actually use the site. And all you have to do with Cucumber is um, write the command Cucumber and then the feature file that, is that better, guys? Uh, the Cucumber and then the feature file that you're testing from. And it should uh, fire off all those steps that are, that are behind the gherkin in that file. Um, in this case, it's going to spin up a new web browser, and it's going to see what happens if it puts both an invalid image and a valid image. Uh, into your, a new user profile. And we, when we made our new registration page, we tried to put in some validations so that if you put in a good picture, the picture page would automatically populate with the photo. If it was a bad picture, you would get an error message, and the picture would just change to uh, the error image. So hopefully this will work. So right now, Water Web, dri web Driver should be firing up a new browser. Um, it knows click the login button, and it's going to try to register as a new user. Right now, uh, it typed in I'm not an image, and it's verifying that it actually did get an error message. And after this, it should put in an actually valid image, and it will automatically show up. And it's a really short test. But if you go back to your console, you can see that all of your steps were green, which is good. And red is bad. And in this other example, this is my bad branch. Um, give it a sec. So all I did here was put the the login page right on the home page. In, in some sites, you don't actually go, you, you, you don't actually click a login button. It's just you log in like Twitter, and there's just a login page right there. So maybe a developer decided that actually is a lot cleaner, and that's like, so that's how I think I'll make that page. But that wasn't approved by anybody to do. But a lot of its tests might still pass. So now that's the default page, and it's looking for a login button, but it's not going to find it anywhere because it's not there, and it's going to fail. And hmm. any questions? I don't know how to just do the last page. Any questions?